Well, welcome back on the AM show. As promised, we're going into the regions now and uh, we're going to be interacting with some of our correspondents there to gauge the mood in these regions and find out what exactly the reactions have uh, been. Let's connect uh, with Kwejo who is actually joining us from Cape Coast in the central region. Kwejo, if you can hear me, a very good morning to you. Good morning. Great. Now you've unmuted. Now, I'd like to find out in, in the Cape Coast, for example, what has the reaction been on the back of the elections, both presidential and uh, parliamentary? And then we can extend to uh, the rest of the central region. Well, it's been massive. Um, yesterday in the evening, for instance, there was brass band uh, music procession throughout the principal street of Cape Coast. Uh, you go to Kotokraba, you go to London Bridge, you go to Kingsway, uh, Bakano, and its environs, Abra, and all of that. In fact, uh, what was remarkable was that uh, the MPP supporters that were jubilating, they were actually jubilating with the campaign song of the NDC, and a lot of people really joined. So it was really fascinating to learn how um, a, a political party could use the opposing um, campaign song uh, to celebrate when they, they, they won. So it was really an interesting spectacle. It has traveled um, in the morning as well. Even though other people are going about their normal duties, they've gone to work and all of that, you can still find people in their MPP paraphernalia still celebrating the win. In fact, in Cape Coast, um, the they couldn't really celebrate well because both seats have been lost uh, to the NDC. Kukuri uh, Kithagan, for instance, uh, retained his seat. And then in the Cape Coast North, Barbara Shaisi lost the seat to uh, Dr. Kwame Nami So um, the, the, the celebration started earlier with the NDC when they won their parliamentary seat, but it was taken over shortly by the MPP when the presidential results were declared. Right. And I was about to ask you specifically about those issues you just delved into. The NDC taking over Cape Coast when it comes to the parliamentary, but losing uh, the presidential. Have, have, how have the people reacted you know, to that, the, the losses in parliament and the likelihood of uh, parliament being you know, a very tight race? In your interactions, how have the, the, the people reacted to that? Well, so, uh, for instance, in the Cape Coast North, it wasn't that surprising. Um, it was known in town that Barbara Achaisi was going to lose. Uh, but about three weeks to the election, things changed. And so it was very too close to call because a lot of work had to be done by the MPP, MP, the incumbents there. But, I mean, it was unfortunate that she couldn't, I mean, really maintain that seat. But in the Cape Coast South, it was such a fierce contest that, uh, between Kweku Rikid Hagen and the mayor of Cape Coast, it was a contest that no one could predict who was going to win. But Kweku Rikid Hagen kept on saying that, well, he was confident of retaining the seat. But we do not really know um, how uh, that contest uh, was not... <laughs> so it, it didn't really live up to the building because Kweku Rikid Hagen eventually won with some um, difference. Uh, the margin was not um, what... Uh, we witnessed in the 2016 election. In fact, he won with some uh, good, 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 good margin. So um, in the Cape Coast South, that was what it was. Now, give us a complexion of what it looks like now when it comes to uh, the seats, the par you know, the, the different parties have actually uh, got the NDC and the MPP uh, foremost among them. What complexion has, you know, the central region uh, taken that you can share with us? Well, Yes. So um, prior to the election, it was obvious that some of the seats that were won by the MPP, they were going to go back to their uh, their owners. If you look at the Kunfi uh, constituency, that seat has been consistently won by the NDC. But people realized that it was as a result of the wind of change. That, that was why the MPP was able to annex that seat. If you go to the upper, uh, the Chufu Etimuka cons uh, constituency from 1992, the NPP had not won that seat before, but in 2016, they won. Abraham Jumodum won that seat, but today that seat has been lost. The shocker of all of them was the upper Dinchua. 
uh, east and the upper Dintra west constituency. Of course, the upper Dintra west constituency, um, um, it is still in contention. And so as we speak now, it's um, 12 seats for the NDC and um, 10 seats for the MPP, unless that one is rectified and we are made known that that one has been certified then the MPP would get either 11 or the NDC will get either 13. And so that seat is still in contention. If you go to the KEA constituency, Samuel Atamos, that is where the NDC um, running mate, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Jinan Opokwajiman uh, hails from, she went to vote them. But the NDC at the end of the day um, still maintained that seat. Uh, Samuel Atamos maintained that seat. For, of course, the Cape Coast North and the Cape Coast South have been spoken about. If you go to the Chifuhiman Lower Dentra constituency, uh, Bright Rekubube of the NPP retained that seat. In fact, um, that seat uh, has been won by the NDC before. It was carved out of the Chifu Itimokwa constituency. If you go to the Upper Dentra East constituency, the NDC, MPP maintained that seat. Go to the Abra Sebu Kwamankese. It was a contest that was very close. It was a close shave for the incumbent MP, um, Elvis Morris Donko. It was fiercely contested by uh, Felix Kwachio Fosu. And at the end of the day, the margin was um, 176. So Felix Kwachio Fosu of the NDC uh, lost out of that seat, and uh, the margin was 176. If you go to the Fantaman constituency, it was one key constituency we are all um, uh, keeping our eyes on because the MP died uh, three months to the elections or two months uh, to the elections and was subsequently replaced by the wife. So at the end of the day, the wife eventually won that seat. So if you look at the NDC candidate, James Isan, uh, both husband and wife, have beaten um, him. And so uh, if you go to Fantaman constituency now, it is James, um, it is um, Ophelia Kwanza Hayford who won the seat. Right. Another seat, mm. the Ejumaku Enyan Isiam constituency, of course, you know that we did the battleground there. Um, Kesel Atu Forsen came up uh, with the NPP candidate. And surprising, a lot of us thought that that constituency was another constituency um, that was too close to call. But at the end of the day, the margin, uh, that case like was um, the contender was about 10,000. If you go to the uh, Ekunfi, of course, we've spoken about it, the NDC candidate one, go to Efutu, Afenio Markins uh, retained that seat. If you go to Aguna West, Cynthia Morris, the gender minister, at, also retained the seat. Will we take Aguna, East has, Aguna East has been consistently won by uh, Quinsta Pukia Soya, and she retained the seat. She beat uh, the Minister for Tertiary Education, uh, Professor Kwesi Yanka, to it. In the Ewutu Senya East constituency, um, that seat was also retained by the NPP. Ewutu Senya West, Georgianda lost to Gezela Tete. And so in the um, Esikuma or the Wayne Braqua was also um, lost to the NDC. So the NDC now has that seat. And so the general outlook of the central region is that. The NDC today has 12 seats. Um, now we, 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 we are yet to know the outcome of the upper Dintra West constituency, and the NDC had 10. Prior to the election, the MPP had 19 seats, and the NDC had four seats. So look at the difference. So now the NDC has really um, closed that gap and have even um, 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 now taken the majority of the seats in the central region. So uh, that is how the outlook of the central region now is. Thank you very much. But a lot of you have actually been calling us. You can actually reach us via that number, 0302-211-691, extension 2, and share your thoughts with us. We have Della from Kojokrum, uh, Takradi. Della, good morning to you. You and your entire crew. Great. It's been great. a hectic day for you. Right. Yeah, now, well, what are your thoughts well, on uh, election 2020 that you'd like to share with us? Yeah, it, it seems there is a certain issues that need to be clarified. Um, normally, when you vote in our areas, some of us as agents, we don't follow up the ballot boxes to the collection centers because it is protected with seals. But this time around, some of us decided to follow them to the collection centers. But uh, I don't know why, how come government pick up in a scary for instance, that's where I was. And I, I will speak to that fact because 
I was there and I saw everything vis a vis. Imagine 10 p.m. A government pickup coming with a ballot box next to, with that seal. And, and, and it took some of us and the military men to drive, to drive uh, that pickup away. Less than 30 minutes, that pickup came back with a heavy police armed men with perpetually all over, giving one shot, paving way for these ballot boxes to be entered into the collection center. Ballot boxes with that seal. Which, which polling station was this, just for the sake of clarity? The Scary Ketel Coalition Center. I was there, and some of us, we cried physically. Ballot boxes that were not sealed with, with, with the political party sealed, opened, Full, fully, fully guarded with police arms, came into the coalition centers so that they, they could be added to the uh, vote of the incumbent MP. And this is so satisfying that, you know, Due to the anything put in place, both uh, political parties knew where they won and where they lost. So how come? How come? What, was there was there any law, report made about this incident? Ballot boxes that were not protected with seals to be added to the vote that were counted at the police station. I don't know how come GC allowed themselves to be used. And, and, and well, some allegations being made there. I was asking, though, whether, you know, some report had been made on that incident, because if it's that grave, of course, reports ought to be made. But let's connect with Fatal in Tamale. Fatal, good morning to you. Now, what are your thoughts on the back of December 7? Hello, good morning. Good morning, Fatal, if you can hear me. What yes, are um, your Fatal, you reflections from, on Tamale. Election Day? Yeah, I'll be talking you from Tamale. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear, Fatal. What are your reactions good morning to, you to election good 2020? Morning to the entire, um, uh, should I say, uh, crew of your station. Um, yes. Um, to be honest and sincere to you, our democracy is now thrown to the docks. As since yesterday, since 7 p.m. Up, up to now, I don't understand how our democracy is going now. Why? Why? Where have we? What have we done wrong to deserve this kind of military? I don't know. It is a strange thing. To, but in the first place, I want to blame you, the media. In the first place, especially, I used to respect Joy News a lot. But it seems that this government has brought you this year to work on his behalf. I'm telling you, some of us we are very angry about the situation. You cover your your thing. It's, it's not the best. Look, look at where, what has happened at the Chima South. No, and none of you. And then international observers, you look at all these things, not what you put in, and you people just turn a blind eye to all these things. You claim, and then you, you back this government. In fact, the figures that we've given, I'm, I, I, so bad we've lost, we, we, it's okay. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for your time with us, uh, Fatal. But um, you spoke about Tashiman South. We covered that extensively with videos right here on uh, Joy News, making known exactly what was happening. In fact, we're one of the first outlets to make that known. And in terms of the declaration of results or any actions to be taken, we only cover as a media house. We have no further responsibility in that regard. And we only made projections as well ahead of what figures we had got certified. Let's move on to Amos in Kintampo. Amos, good morning to you. What are your reflections on election 2020? I think the whole election in general has been very competitive, and I'm very impressed with it because it has proven that Ghanaians are descending, and we are beginning to see different sides of the political parties. And so far, though, my, my, my candidate probably might not win, but it has proven that we have given them a good challenge. Right. But looking at things, I think the media also did very well. And though some cases, they actually projected some other uh, misleading information. Some cases actually shown out uh, uh, quite figures, and I think they should apologize for that. But so far, I think it's good, and we hope that going forward, we are going to have peace in this country. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Amos in Kentampo. Let's move on to Adamu in Hohoi. Adamu, good morning to you. And uh, what are your reflections, your thoughts on election 2020, and especially what happened in your constituency? Is it Adamu we've lost? Okay, so let's connect with um, Anasibid from uh, the Bono 
East region uh, who joins us. Now, Adamu, what exactly is the situation, the mood in the Bono East uh, region where the NDC made quite a showing? What is the mood there, celebratory or not? Anas Sabit, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Great. So I was asking initially, what uh, is the mood in the Bono East region uh, currently? Is, is it one of excitement? Is it one uh, that is down? W what exactly is the mood? Um, in Tichiman, this is the regional capital. And I'm uh, on the principal streets of Tichiman. Uh, the town is uh, quite, quite, very quiet. I mean, business is ongoing as usual. There's nothing like um, uh, any group celebrating. Uh, there, there seems to be nothing like it. It, it, it seems like there hasn't been any collaboration yet. The town is on, uh, I mean, as usual. You can see from the streets, uh, business is ongoing as usual. I don't see NPP, I don't see NDC, and I see people going on their normal duties as uh, usual. So, um, this is what is happening in the Tichiman Township, which is the um, Tichiman South constituency specifically, and this is uh, the situation here. I don't see uh, anything as in the, there's been an election and uh, one party has been declared. Uh, you, know, you know, if you remember, uh, during the chairperson's uh, uh, you know, declaration, she indicated that the Tichiman South results uh, is under contention. I don't know if that could play a factor in the reason why the town seems quite dull. Last night, there were some celebrations by uh, members of the New Democratic Party after the declaration. We, um, they had a lot of fun on the streets. But this morning, I see virtually nothing. I passed in front of the uh, constituency party office of the New Democratic Party, and the place is also very serene, very quiet. It's few people uh, over there. And in the township, like I said, uh, nothing really is going on. And people are going on with their usual duties. Now, let's talk uh, security. And you, you, you brought up the issue of uh, Techiman South. What is security like there currently? Well, from the election day, there was, there's been heavy security uh, presence in Techiman, especially around the Electoral Commission's office and then the coalition center, heavy security. I see a lot of uh, planes and uh, military personnel, plus immigration and uh, all the other uh, security agencies. They are in town in their numbers. To yesterday, for instance, before the declaration by the Electoral Commission, they were all over town, uh, in fact, patrolling up and down to ensure that there is sanity in the uh, municipality. If you remember, uh, two days ago, before the declaration of the Tichiman South constituency results by the Electoral Commission, there were some uh, confusions at the collision center that led to the police uh, trying to control the crowd, firing some warning shots in the process. Some uh, two persons were hit by bullets, and later we understand the, the, the number was more than that. Uh, we picked from the NDC that three of their people died, but um, Others are also receiving, responding to treatment at the hospital. But from that day, I must say, there's a lot of security personnel in town, and uh, uh, the kind of um, you know confusion that erupted at the EC or at the population center has not occurred anywhere in the municipality even since that particular day. I said that in some areas, especially the Zungu communities, people are quite shocked, people are afraid of um, what has happened, and so uh, even those who may want to uh, commit mayhem. Uh, kind of advising themselves and they are very, very quiet from that particular day. Uh, finally, now you, you say some people are afraid. How have the people generally reacted to this fact of the, uh, you know, the, the police, the military using force in Techiman South and some people dying? Apart from the fear, the apprehension, what have you heard the people saying? Can you, can you repeat the question, the line? So Sorry, on the uh, back uh, of the shooting incidents that took the lives of some people, that's my final question for you. How have the people reacted? Apart from being a, afraid, how have the people reacted? What have they been telling you? In terms of their reaction, um, 
some, you know, we have two factions, the NDC and the NPP. I was at the coalition center when the incident happened. Uh, those are the NDC side that have, are expressing disappointment in how the, the security personnel manage the situation. Uh, they, they felt uh, they, do not, they should not have, you know, fired those warning shots uh, that led to what we, ha we, have, we have seen. But on the other side, uh, I have spoken to a number of people who are also of the view that the situation could have been avoided if the supporters uh, had not masked up at the coalition center. So, um, well, it's mixed reaction. Uh, some are disappointed. Some are also saying that the security had no option than to do what they did because their lives were equally at risk and that of the Electoral Commission and the, uh, the whole of us, this, this uh, me uh, media, and the rest of us who were at the coalition center, then they felt if an action had, had not been taken on that day, we could have recorded something very unfortunate. So right, it's, right. it's a mixed, mixed, mixed reaction here in the, in, the, in the township, but we hope uh, that will be the end of it. And as I'm seeing in the, in the municipality, things are quite normal. And um, in the Zongo communities, even after the declaration of uh, the NPP's uh, presidential candidate as a winner, the NPP people in the Zongo community did not even jubilate because those who were shot or those who were who passed on are from that area. So both sides were kind of mourning, and so they could not jubilate. And it's very, very unfortunate. Uh, Anas Sabit, uh, thank you very much. Uh, 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 reporting there from uh, the Bono East uh, region. Uh, well, quite some disturbing you know, news coming from there. But hey, there's uh, more coming your way on the AM show. It is Showbiz with Caddy. That's up next when we return.